Hey guys, welcome back to the final video that we're going to do on menus. So last time we had basically set up our system and gotten everything ready so that it will run these scripts when we input something into the menu. So we were doing that in this code down here. So we were pulling out the script that we wanted to run from here, right? So that would be whatever is stored in this column, 0, 1, 2. So if we were changing the difficulty or the resolution or whatever, we were pulling the appropriate script from our grid. And we were also giving it the value that we were basically changing. So that was in column three. So we have to actually set up our scripts now. So taking the easiest one for an example, so we could, in the exit game one, you can literally just put exit game. And if you were to run that, now you should get quitting the game. So let's move on to something like changing the window mode. So this was going to be either setting the basically window to either full screen or windowing it again. And in our menu, the way we set this out, as it is in here, so whatever this corresponds to, it would kind of get this entry in the array. So if it was set to zero, it would get this first entry. And if it was one, it would be window. So we know if it's zero, we want to set it to full screen. And if it's one, we want it to be window. So we can literally just put that in here. So we can have a switch statement. And basically, whatever this argument that we're getting is equal to, whatever value in column three that we're getting, so in the case that it's zero, then we were going to set window full screen to be true. And then we break. And then if it is one, then we set it to false. So let's just run that and give it a check. Come down to settings, graphics, and change the window mode. There we go. So that is working. All right, let's move on. And let's do the volume. So now remember, we set this debug message up last time, but we don't need this anymore. So for the volume, we have to be a little bit more clever because basically we want three different kinds of volumes. So we had sort of a master volume. So this affects kind of everything. And then we have sounds, which will be all our sound effects. And then we have music. And you might even have more than that. So you might have voices, for example. What we're going to have to do is actually create different audio groups and then put all of our sound effects in the sound effect audio group and all our music in the music effect audio group. And then we can change the audio groups volumes. And that's how we can get them sort of differently affected. So to do that, you're going to need, first of all, a few sounds. So I have a few sounds already in my project that I put in. They're actually the exact same sound, but I'm going to put all of them into different audio groups so that I can test it. So this one is going to be my master sound. This is the sound effects one, and this is the music one. So what I'm going to do is come up to tools, audio groups. And so by default, all of your sounds are just going to be placed in this default audio group. So if you never touch this in your whole project, all of your sounds should be appearing here. But what we can do is add new audio groups. So we just made another one and we can call this, for example, sound effects. And I'll add another one and call this one music. And let's come back to the default one and we can reassign these to the new audio group. So let's send the music one to music and the sound one to the sound effects. All right. Now, before we do anything, actually, what we have to do is in the menu, we have to load those audio groups in because they aren't going to be loaded by default. You could do that in a controller object. So if you have a game object or some overseeing object, because this only has to be done once. So you'll want this to be done in some persistent object. But I'm just going to do it in my menu objects because that's all my project consists of. And we're going to type audio group load. So firstly, the music one. And the sound effects one. Another thing I'm going to do is actually just play these sounds when we're kind of inputting into those audio groups. So I'm going to come into the step event and come back up to when we're inputting those slider ones. So this was our volume. And what I'm going to do here is, depending what option we're selecting, that is going to correspond to what type of sound I'm going to want to play. So if I'm on that one, on the master one, then I'm going to play the master sound. If I'm on this one, then I'm going to play the sound effects one and the music one. So I need to get this first, and then I'm going to use a switch statement. So if that's zero, one, two, or three, then we need that to correspond to this one, this one, or this one. 
What I'm going to say is basically if there isn't that sound playing, I want to play it. So let's play. So the master test sound and then a priority. I'm not going to worry too much about that. You can set priority for the sounds, which basically just means if there's multiple sounds playing at once, it might prioritize the highest sound. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to put one. You could put any number. And I'm going to say, no, I don't want it to loop. And of course, break. And we'll do that for each one. And I'll just change the type of sound we're playing. There we go. But at the moment, this will play it every single step that we're hovering over each of these options. In the menus, that's gonna play lots and lots of sounds every step. That's not what I want to do. It's gonna be very hard on the ear. So what I'm actually just gonna check first is if it's not already playing the sound, then I'll play that sound. So if audio is playing, so if it is not playing, then I will go ahead and do this. So I'll just put that for all of them as well. Like that, and I'll just put some brackets in as well. There we go. So now we'll get them to play. But now we actually have to come back to our script and get it to change the volume. So let's go to change volume. And now, so remember what this value is for our volumes. So we will be getting this number, but at the moment, the script doesn't know whether it wants to be changing the master, the sounds, or the music. So in the script, we're going to have to get the type that we're changing. And that's just going to be whatever menu option we're selecting. So now, sort of like before, we can switch the type. Right, so just like all of our other switch statements, if it's zero, then we know it's the master. If it's one, it's going to be the sounds. And if it's two, it'll be the music. So if it is the master one, then we are going to change the gain, the master gain. And we're just going to set that to whatever this value is. And that should actually affect all of the audio groups. All right. And then for case one, so remember that's the sound effects one, then we are going to change the gain of this specific audio group. So our sound effects audio group. So we give it a volume and this time means sort of how quickly it's going to change. And this is the change in milliseconds. So if I put 10 here as the argument, it would change that volume over 10 milliseconds. I just want it to change instantly, so I'm just going to put zero. All right, and now same thing for this one, but instead of sound effects, we're changing the music. All right, now if we run that, and let's come over to our audio, if we hit enter, we should be hearing that sound. And if we turn this down and hit enter again, it should have changed that sound. So you might want to update the script, not just when you're hitting enter, but when you're just inputting onto the volume menu. So we would just need to copy this, if that's the case, and just put that in here. And then you'll get it to change whenever you change the slider at all. So it should change that sound anytime you change the slider. All right, so that is it for the volume. Let's move on to the difficulty. So now I'm not going to tell you a specific thing to change depending on your game and how you've set up your enemies. This script is probably going to look very different, but some things you can do is change like some variables. So you might have some global variables for how much health your enemies have, detection radiuses to include or disclude parts of your AI. So you would do all of that in your script, but I'll show you how to set it up because remember in our menu, we had two kinds of difficulty that we needed to change. So we had some for our enemies and some for our allies. So sort of like the volume. So the script has to know what one we're currently over. So we have to get that menu option again. So let's come to the difficulty one. So just like our volume, we get the type first. Our argument zero is going to be the new difficulty. So what we're going to do is say if type is equal to zero, then we know that is the enemies because in our menu, we had it set up that enemies was zero and allies was one. This is the enemies and this was our allies. And there were three different kind of settings that I put for mine. So they could be harmless, normal, terrible, or dimwitted, normal, and helpful. And depending on what this is equal to, it would be one of those. So again, we can just switch whatever that argument that we were getting and have all of our different cases. 
So that would work the same for the enemies and the allies. You would just have different code here. So for example, for your enemies, you might have you could have the enemy health at one here or the damage or something, and then two for medium and three for hard. And you could change settings like this in that way. So that's how you would go about setting that up. All right, let's move on to the resolution. So this should be our last one. So I had these resolutions here and you could sort of access the values that you put in here or you could add an additional column that just had the hard numbers. But at the moment, we only have them as strings. So we could do it in the same way that we've done the full screen. So remember, we had here, basically, depending on what this was equal to, then we knew that it would change it to this, 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 or this. And I'm just going to do it that way because that's probably the simplest to understand. So when, if it's zero, it will be this. If it's one, that one, two, three, and four. So we can just switch based on whatever argument zero is and set up all of our cases. And then we just have to change the window size. So we just change it to a specific width and height for all of them. All right, so that should be all our cases. Let's come and check the resolutions. So let's change it now. So that, so there you go. We're getting the window changing. All right, so we are done. That is it for the menu series. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who has supported me on Patreon to make these tutorials. And special shout outs to Semimyth, Alina S, Ricky C, Ian Seckington, Danielle Hargrave, Max Molinaro, Hunter T, Thomas M, The Great Poultry, XD Game Studio, Doan Techbin, and Spock 2018. Thanks guys, I hope you're well, and I'll see you next time.